Buenos nachos. I hope you had a phenomenal weekend and I hope you had a very profitable money making Monday. In this video, we got some important things to chit chat about. We should get into all the major things you should be paying attention to for the remainder of this week, all the important macroeconomic developments. We got a holiday and just scheduled reports. So I want to put all that stuff on your radar. And we have some important chart developments too. But before we get to all that, I want to review my trade from the day. Wasn't the easiest trading day, but I ended up making 89%. So I wanted to do a quick breakdown just for the sake of transparency and hopefully you can learn a thing or two i just like to do kind of this video journaling to keep myself accountable and i also want to talk about how the former president of the united states mr donald j trump just added billions of dollars to his personal net worth because it looks as if his own stock is now squeezing so definitely an interesting story there as well but before we get to all that if you enjoyed this type of content these daily updates the trade reviews and pretty much just my own thoughts on life don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments. And with that being said, let's rock. By the time the closing bell went dingity ding 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 dong today, Monday, March 25th, here is the official headline. Dow closes more than 150 points lower as stocks take a break from their rally. Now, that sounds a little bit bearish and today kind of was, but let me explain why it didn't really feel that much. Daily DGEN report. I myself, before fees, made $560 today. I took it a little bit slow because my trading system, aka Piper, Piper's Picks, was bullish today, but not so confident. It was a three out of five confidence on both the SPY and on the Qs. So I figured with that, eh, we shouldn't oversize. Let's not do anything too crazy because one trade's not going to make you, but one trade can 100% break you. So because of that, I waited for the signal to generate and I ended up selling some put credit spreads on the S&P 500 index, sold it at 90 cents, recovered it at 10 cents. That's how I made the 89%. And because I had seven of these, if you do the math out, it was 860 before fees, 828 after fees. If you want to know how that all looked visually, the reason I sold put premium is because at market open, things were looking pretty strong. I also knew there was a really good chance, specifically a 69% chance of an upside gap fill to the low from last week. So I figured with those odds, even if it takes time, a lot of this premium should burn off. And right when power hour started, I was able to lock in those tendies and it wasn't the most profitable day. It was a little bit of just a sideways grind type of burning day, but hey, I can't complain because I ended up making 500 smackaroos by basically playing a video game on my computer. So I'm not going to complain at all. It was an easy peasy lemon breezy type of a day. And I hope you made a good chunk of change as well. Now, even though I would like to think that my own trades are the biggest news of the day, in reality, is that ever true? The big news of the day related to Donald Trump, who today in New York had to handle the next steps in two of his big legal cases, one with Alvin Bragg and one with Letitia James. And the one that was more of the criminal side coming into today, he had a hefty bill. I'm talking about a $464 million bond situation that a lot of people were questioning, would he be able to handle it? Well, as of today, we actually found out that it's considerably less. Still the big dollar value, but considerably less. The New York Appeals Court has lowered Trump's bond from $464 million to $175 million in New York fraud case. He say he'll pay quickly in cash. The amount should be zero, according to this random Twitter slash X account. But here's what the former president had to directly say. Thank you very much. Judge Ed Gorin has done a terrible disservice to the state of New York. What he's done is terrible. Businesses are fleeing. You see that? We just released a statement on truth. Businesses are fleeing and crime is flourishing all over the state. And what he's done is such a disservice and should never be allowed to happen again. New York State is being battered by his decision. So I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. But Judge Ingoran is a disgrace to this country. 
and this should not be allowed to happen. For those of you who are curious in more of the specific details, here's the TLDR on the situation. Trump New York fraud bond cut to $175 million in appeal from the original $454 million. A New York appeals court paused for 10 days a massive civil fraud judgment against the former president Donald Trump. The court also and sharply reduced the bond he would have to post to obtain a longer stay to $175 million. Now, with these very large numbers related to his bond, a lot of people are saying, hang on, he said he was rich, but he can't pay this original one, and now it's lower, but it's still a big dollar value. Does he have the money? Does he not have the money? Has he been lying about it? Well, I don't know who is or isn't lying, but I can definitively tell you in terms of his net worth, at least as of now, for sure, he has the dinero. DWAC, ticker symbol DWAC stock jumps 30% on Trump's reduced bond post-merger ticker news. DWAC is the SPAC, the special purpose acquisition company that was set to merge with his version of Twitter, aka True Social, the investors, the equity owners in the company just last week approved the deal. So as soon as you're about to see tomorrow, Tuesday, it will be trading under the new merge ticker, which is not only prompting excitement in the stock price, but it also is literally just directly increasing his personal net worth. Shares of DWAC soared about 30% after Corp sharply reduced the bond former President Donald Trump has to pay to appeal a New York civil fraud ruling, and the company announced it will change its ticker. The ruling came after the approval of a merger between the Shell Company, the SPAC company, and the social media group owned by the former President Mr. Donald Trump. Shares of the merged company are set to begin publicly trading Tuesday, March 26th, under the new ticker symbol DJT. I just want to cover that because right now, if you are long or short or in any way dealing with DWAC, as of tomorrow, it's you're still going to have it. It's just going to be a new ticker symbol DJT. Here's what happened. DWAC on the news, on the excitement, as you can just see today ripped. It opened up at $40, got as high as 52, up 35% today alone, year to date up 183%. That's crazy. The past month, 5.6, past week, 25%. On all major time frames, it is in the green, which means that all the investors who have been holding it for this time frame are in one form or another, very much in the green, including Trump himself. But before we get to that, true social owner of Trump Media will begin trading under DJT ticker Tuesday. And the fact that this deal got approved and then also what's happening with the courts today means that it is just skyrocketing, as I showed you, which means that Donald Trump's personal net worth is also skyrocketing skyrocketing. Trump's net worth hit $6.5 billion, making him one of the world's 500 richest people. The same guy who a mere couple days ago, a week ago, when everyone's saying, dude, he has no money. He can't pay a single bill. He's lying about it. He's completely broke. No, officially, he is one of the 500 richest people in the world. I'm not saying that as if you should like him, as if you shouldn't like him. I'm just saying it as straight up fact. And sometimes there's facts you like, sometimes there's facts you don't like. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, 50% of you watching this right now are angry. You're punching the air. You don't want to see this. And then the other half of you are like, oh, ha, huh, good. He might be getting the last laugh here. On that note, before I move on, I just want to get a better feel for my own audience. Please comment below. If you mind sharing, I'm not saying you have to share. I would like to know for my own curiosity, my own morbid curiosity. Let me know who you're voting for. Trump, Biden, or neither. If you got to this point in the video, thank you. And just let me know by posting below in a comment, if you can vote in the US, Trump, Biden or neither. I just want, I'm just curious. I want to see where everyone's at. With that in mind, let's move on. DWAC wasn't the only thing that had a good day. Bitcoin is looking phenomenal. Bitcoin currently trading just below 71,000, a hair below all time highs with a market cap of 1.4 trillion with overall crypto being worth almost 2.7 trillion. Here's a look at the daily chart of Bitcoin. I put this in the newsletter, which is free. I'll give you the link in a second, but anyway, Bitcoin ripped higher highs, higher lows, took a little bit of a breather, consolidated in the EMA cloud, and then we just had this beautiful wedge breakout. Obviously, the top of it, 68, these higher lows forming the wedge, the break. This is an official breakout, and the question is, how high will it go? Will it tag 72? Will it tag 74? Will it keep going? Will it get rejected? Obviously, time will tell, worthwhile to pay attention to, and obviously, pay attention if Bitcoin's ripping to the related plays, such as Coinbase, ticker symbol C-O-I-N, also breaking out. And then don't forget about other well-known players in the cryptosphere, Mara, Riot. On top of that, 
not directly crypto. I just want to put Nvidia on your radar. Higher highs, higher lows, consolidation, breakout. Looks like it wants to be testing a new all-time high pretty soon. You also have Amazon, similar setup, beautiful higher highs, higher lows. You're seeing the bullish momentum. And then even plays like Netflix, that slow but sure grind to the upside. Higher highs, higher lows, looking good. Very quick side note, not exactly what we would traditionally think of as the sympathy play, but if you think the political situation is going to continue to be a hot tamale, if you think DWAC slash DJT slash that whole situation is going to be a hot tamale, don't forget to pay attention to rum. Not only is it potentially somewhat of a sympathy play, not exactly, but uh, there is a fair argument that some investors are going to be simp thinking of them in a similar concept but rum reporting after the market closes this wednesday so there could be some fireworks there other things you should be paying attention to this week Tuesday, March 26, 10 a.m., the consumer confidence. Thursday, we get the second revision of the Q4 GDP. And then on Friday, I want to let you know the market is closed in observation of Good Friday. So if you're swinging whatever your options, a G Gen play, you might have one less day this week than you normally do because the market is closed Friday, March 29th. Also, you should pay attention to the fact that the five year and the 10 year bond auctions, the 26th, 27th. So Tuesday and Wednesday, I want to put that on your radar. And if you're looking for a place that has all this information for free in a concise manner, that's exactly what the newsletter is for. I break down the week, what I'm looking forward to, all the major macroeconomic events, the earnings that I think you're going to care about. And then on top of that, arguably the most useful part of the newsletter, the seasonality for every individual day. So historically, Tuesday, March 26 has favored the bulls historically the bulls have won this day two out of three times 64 percent with a profit factor very nice at 2.83 so clearly the seasonal bias is bullish now is that a guarantee that tomorrow's going to be bullish no it's saying hey two out of three times it's smarter to be a bull than it is to be a bear and then i do some options breakdown and all that good stuff and then the charts like i said i gave this to you guys over the weekend i was calling for this bitcoin breakout look what happened today i was looking at coinbase to follow through it exactly did i was looking at nvidia to fall through it exactly did meta not quite there but i i still have some faith and then netflix i was looking for that grind higher and higher same thing with amazon so so far feeling pretty good i hope you had a great weekend i hope you had a great money making monday i hope you crush in the market and i hope you continue to crush in the market that's what i have for you now i appreciate that you spent a second of your day watching my update videos it means the world to me so thank you i'll catch you in the next one Peace out.